What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. I thought today I would give you a tour of my ultimate quail cage. Uh, for a while now I've been doing some research online on YouTube and stuff and there are like two names that always come up whenever you're looking up uh, information on quail and Caternix quail and stuff like that. One of them is Caternix Corner and they're a really good channel. They've got a lot of resources there. Uh, the guy seems like a really nice guy and he has a lot of different cage designs and stuff there on his uh, web page or whatever you'd say his youtube page uh the other guy is uh slightly rednecked i think is what his channel name is called and as far as i can tell that's all he does is like quail and rabbits and stuff like that uh so if you want to know about building quail cages and things like that and how to construct them you can go over there but i basically combined the best of every different design that I could find. I found the best aspects of every different design that I could find. I wanted this thing to be lightweight, lightweight enough that my wife and I could grab it right here by the handle and easily wheel it around the yard. That way if we get a buildup of too much uh, manure over here or something like that, then we could move it away and we'd be able to use it sort of like a chicken tractor. Other, uh, you know, obviously they don't scratch the ground or anything, but their droppings will fall down and eventually that'll build up. And I, from what I hear, I've never raised quail before, but from what I hear, uh, they poop a lot. So uh, you're probably gonna wanna be able to move your cage around. And not only that, it just makes sense for us because uh, this is our suburb house here. And in the future, what we're wanting to do is build over on our hundred acres and actually build, you know, a farm. And we want to be able to move all of this stuff with us when we go. So I wanted everything to be transportable and mobile and stuff like that. Easier to wheel around and easier on my back, you know. Uh, and also there's a factor of when, when my wife is out at work or when I'm out at work or something like that, there may be times when this cage needs to be moved without the help of two people, right? So uh, that's why I put wheels on it and I made it to where I could roll it around. Uh, my goal was to keep this thing as lightweight as possible. So I used one by twos up here on the main frame here of the chambers. And I actually thought real seriously about doing a double decker or a two story. Uh, but the reason I didn't do that is because everyone I've ever seen that does the two story, uh, no matter how much angle you put on that roof on the bottom one, it's going to collect poop on it because their poop comes out kind of wet and moist, you know, so it's going to stick and you're going to have to constantly clean that off. And I thought, you know, instead of doing that, uh, I'll just do it side by side. And another reason that I did it side by side is that uh, these these cages here, uh, the, each each chamber from here to here, so halfway down and all the way to the back, it's six foot long this way by two foot long from here to here. But you combine two of them together and now it's four foot wide. So I wanted it to be a little wider because I live in a state where we get some severe winds and you know all kinds of stuff coming through, big gusting winds that can blow something like this over, especially if it was only two feet wide. And I didn't wanna to have to like anchor it down to the ground. I wanted it to be heavy enough and wide and stable enough that it would stand up on its own. So anyway, I wanna bring you in here and I'll show you some of the features that we've put into this cage. All right, first of all, I'll just show you the door set up here. Uh, you know, I could have went out and I could have bought like the, uh, those little hooks, uh, the, the hook and the ring or whatever you call it, where it's got the, you know, the little ring there and you look, lock the hook in there. Or I could have bought the throw bolt thing or whatever you call that, that I've used them on rabbit cages and stuff like that in the past. But my wife and I, we often do this where we just take a piece of wood and hinge it in such a way like this where you can open the door. Now I did have to put a backing board back there so that the door didn't want to fall inward, but it basically stops here and then you close it here and you can see that's really strong. Nothing's going to be able to get in there. So it's simple. It's cheap. I was able to use scrap wood. Uh, oh, and that's one other thing I wanted to tell you. This thing is made out of 100% recycled material. Uh, you can see the roof up top. Uh, that was some old barn tin that I've had around forever. Uh, uh, other than the screws and the hinges, everything else on here and the wire, I had, to, I had to put new wire on for the, you know, to keep the birds in, but all of the wood is all 100% recycled material from pallets. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I've got a pretty much unlimited source on these 10 foot long uh, heavy duty pallets that come with all sorts of wood on them. And that's where I got all the one by twos. That's where I got the plywood, everything that's wood on this, on this uh, cage here is all recycled and even the wheels 
my wife went to a junk sale and found these old lawnmower wheels and I welded up some plates so that I could make them work on here and hopefully they'll hold up. I don't know. Time will tell. Uh, those bottom boards right there, I've just got them setting in there. Uh, the idea is we could put the extra feed that we're going to feed the, you know, the quail. We could put that in a Tupperware bin or something down below and it'll stay out of the elements uh, because it's under the roof. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this or not, but the way I did this, let me lower it down a bit here. Okay, now you can see, you see that gap all the way through there, right there? I raised the roof up about an inch uh, because again, these are one by two, so it's really about three quarters of an inch. I raised it up and that's got cage down there on top of it so they can't fly out or anything, but the idea was is that it would have good circulation. Uh, I was looking at the slightly rednecked uh, that guy's videos and he always builds his cages like this where it has an extra chamber back here uh, you know whether you want to call that a you know the hen house or whatever where they'll typically lay their eggs and stuff so I like that idea because this is an outdoor cage for all seasons. Uh, in the winter time, I could put a light in there if I need to to keep them a little bit warm, but I don't really think I'll need to because uh, the quail seem to be, from what I'm told, a uh, pretty durable, pretty hardy uh, bird. So uh, we'll just walk around here. You can see I put a handle on it. Uh, originally, I was going to have the doors be on the front and the back. Uh, but what I realized was that was a little bit too much space for me to reach in there and like grab a quail uh, because, you know, in the end, the reason we're raising these quail are not just for the eggs. Uh, we want to eat the meat as well. So, a close up of that. Works great. I like how it folds out of the way like that. And again, I saw that over on Slightly Rednecked and I thought that was a great way to do it. Uh, and with our little latch there, it stays nice and secure again nothing's getting in there i mean you'd have to have a pry bar or something to break that break that loose so i'll show you the back how we access this part i've just got a double door back here and it's the same sort of idea here flip the flip the little latch open it up and you can see we've got this nice big chamber i don't know if that's going to show up on the video or not but you can see that little bit of light up there in the front. Uh, that's because there's cage floor, uh, about a foot of it, I'd say, maybe maybe a little less, eight or 10 inches of that section right there. I left that cage floor for air circulation so that air will still be able to flow through here and you know they won't get sick or whatever from breathing up their, their urine and different things like that and their poo and stuff. So anyway, opening her all the way up. And this is basically what I've been out in the shop until really late at night working on it. After work, I come out here and I work on this thing, you know, a few hours every night or whatever. And I've finally gotten this thing done. Uh, it took me, I ended up using three pieces of the barn tin uh, because it was just a little bit under 48 inches. Or I'm sorry, over. It was a little bit wider than 48 inches. And that's because I wanted there to be some overhang over here. So anyway... I'm really excited. We've got a whole bunch of eggs over in the uh, incubator right now. And hopefully, this is our first time ever hatching any eggs like that, but hopefully that'll work out well for us. And we'll get a good hatch rate, and soon enough, we should have quail in here. Now, I won't be able to move them straight in. They'll have to live in a brooder box for a while uh, inside the house, uh, because you know until they get feathers, they can't really come outside. But you can see inside of there, hopefully, I don't know, the sun's kind of shining on that spot you might not be able to see it but there's a little hole there so they can access that part in the, in the back there and my hope is is that i can kind of corral them to one side or the other so if i needed to clean uh, let's say i was going to clean the back section back there i could find a little board or something that i could throw up there over that hole and then i could have them all out here in this area which is where the food and the water will be and they could be out here trapped in this area. And I don't usually, I'm not gonna have to clean this too much except for maybe, you know, a couple times a year, hose it out and bleach it out and stuff like that. But uh, the cage area, most of the droppings will fall. But this area back here, uh, that's where you might put some sand or some other things like that, that the quail like. And, you know, they're gonna make a mess. You're gonna have some wood chips and stuff back there. So you're gonna have to clean that section out. Uh, my plan is, is to be able to kind of corral them all into this side, block it off, and then clean it out easily. And I won't have to worry about birds getting out. But yeah, I'm really excited about this, guys. 
first time our first delve into quail and I think it's going to be a lot of fun not only a lot of fun it's going to put a lot of meat on the table uh, recently uh, I guess it's been about a week or so uh, my wife and I we harvested our first rabbit and yeah it was a little bit sad uh, I didn't want to do it you know I'm not I'm not somebody that that gets off on killing you know an innocent creature or whatever but you know I realized that uh, that's the way of the world if you go over to the store and you buy a package of meat somewhere well guess what that was an innocent creature at one point or another and someone else had to deal with it and I think that's part of our problem is we're too far removed from where our food comes from so uh, part of my ambition in life is to become as self-reliant as I possibly can. And this quail cage is gonna help us to be able to put quail meat on the table. I'm hoping uh, if we can work it out right, I'm hoping we'll be able to eat quail about twice a week if we want to, at least once a week. It'd be nice if we could have rabbit once a week and quail once a week. And then, you know, if we need to, we can increase our flock. And the plan here is that on one side, I'll have all my breeders on one side. And all my grow outs, the ones for eating, will be over here on this side, let's say. Might not necessarily be in that order, but I think you get the idea. So as you can look around here, we're getting our raised beds ready. We're starting to clean those out and getting ready for spring planting. And uh, we'll be able to use the quail droppings for some fertilizer, although it's really hot. It's like chicken poop. Uh, it's really hot, so you have to let it you know, season up in your compost bin. And we have a compost bin over here next to that bunny hutch, that black thing over there. Uh, that's our compost bin. But yeah, just trying to do what we can to get ahead of things uh, before the collapse. I'll give you a quick look at the bunnies. Uh, although it's cleaning day again, so I have to come in here and clean all the poo out. But you can see the little kits there. There's about three of them right there, four of them. They're all in there crowding in around the food bowl. And uh, they're eating pellets now, so that's good. So yeah, I've got a dozen in here, uh, kits. And this cage over here is for my buck. That's my one of my breeding does there, Mama Cass. This is our other breeding doe, uh, Beatrice, or B as we call her for short. But yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I mean, obviously the killing part was not fun. That's not something that we look forward to, but man, let me tell you what, that meat was delicious. It was some of the best meat, most pure meat, certainly, that I've had in many, many years. Cause you know, like you, I often buy a lot of my meat and stuff like that from the store and it can have all kinds of, uh, you know, antibiotics and other things in there, uh, genetically modified things and whatever. There could be all kinds of stuff in there uh, going on. I got a chicken thing going on here behind me, some kind of a chicken activity going on. Oh, I see. Our little, our little white girl, she jumped the, jumped the fence and now she's out here with Russell. That's our rooster there, Russell Crow. He has to live by himself because he's kind of rough on the hens. Uh, he really likes to breed a lot and their back feathers can't keep up with it. The other other rooster we have, Harry, who's on the other side of the fence there, he's not as interested in breeding. So he does it, he does breed them, but he doesn't do it as often. So we typically let Harry live with the hens and Russell has to live in the little bachelor pad over here. And sometimes he gets to be with the hen, but yeah, guys, just doing what we can here uh, to increase our ability to be self-reliant self-sufficient you know putting food on the table and as much as i like growing a garden and stuff like that uh it's hard to beat actually growing meat in your backyard so i've given you guys at least two examples that i've proven here that work uh, chickens for eggs and the rabbits for meat but we're hoping to add the quail in and hopefully our hatch goes well and soon enough one more thing on the menu will be Caternix quail, and I'm really excited about that. We got the jumbos. I'm planning on doing automatic watering, and so part of the reason I built the roof like this is I'll be able to set a five-gallon bucket directly on top of this. It's strong enough. I could probably put two five-gallon buckets on it. And one of the reasons that we put this cross brace in right here 
is if it gets to the point where it gets tippy or we think a big storm's coming or something, we could either put some sandbags or some concrete blocks or something on this bottom shelf here and that will help give it some stability so that it won't blow over and you know obviously we don't want to damage our cage or hurt any of our birds or anything like that or our watering system or any of that kind of stuff so uh, I like that option and again it's just extra bonus that it's on wheels so we can move it around easily so guys let me know what you think about this uh is this the ultimate quail cage will it work out for me have i uh overlooked something uh, because again this is my first rodeo with quail so uh wish me luck we'll see how it all goes appreciate you guys tuning in i hope you're doing things out there uh to become more self-reliant less dependent on the grid it doesn't mean you're ever going to be 100 percent self-reliant but if you can do more of your own stuff there in your backyard i recommend you do it and i think you can get away with a lot of this stuff like maybe not the chickens, but I think you could get away with the quail and the rabbits. The rabbits don't make any noise. Uh, they hardly, they, they can get to stinking if you like let them pee on concrete and stuff like that. But when it's on dirt, it really doesn't stink at all. You don't really get any smell off the pellets. I don't know if it's gonna be the same with the quail or not, but my argument is, is you could get away with this in a city sized backyard. So I highly recommend it. Start looking into it guys. Uh, your life may depend on it in the future. Oh, there she goes. She's running away from you. <laughs> He's over here courting her. He'll do a little dance for her. See him dancing on his on one leg? He'll kick his leg out and start doing this little chicken dance thing. And that basically means he's courting her and he's trying to get her ready for breeding. Although she ain't having it. She's like running away from him. So, <laughs> But anyways, guys, uh, it's a lot of fun and it puts meat on the table. And if you're going to get into chickens, I recommend, even if you don't use them for meat production, I recommend getting some dual purpose birds just in case in the future you have to use them for meat production. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think about my cage and I look forward to reading your comments. Until then, we'll see you next time.